What kind of 3D printer can you get for $15,000? Well, we're gonna take a look at Vision Miner's 22 IDEX V2, their high temperature IDEX machine. And also Lulzbot's got their new version of the Mini. It's running Clipper and Core XZ. But first, we're gonna be taking a look at the 8-Track, an open source AMS project by Armored Turtle. So thank you to LDO Motors for sponsoring today's video. For printer parts, kits, accessories, and more, check them out at the link in the description. Okay, so this is really cool. I'm here with Robert from Armor Turtle, and they have a multi-filament feeder system here attached to a Voron V2. That is pretty cool, and it's called the 8-Track. So, Robert, what do we got here? So what we have is a modular automated filament changer. Each uh, filament is in its own dry box. We call these cassettes. It works kind of like a thumper block for a carrot feeder. This is what feeds the filament to and from the tool head. And again, it's a modular system, so the slots and the cassettes can go in any configuration. The standalone unit itself, which is what we're going to be working primarily on, is actually considerably smaller than the top hat for the two. Okay, so this is more just like a demonstration piece kind of thing? Yeah, right yeah. Now? It's just okay. big screen, get the attention. So what is this kit? Can you open up one of these to show us what we have here? Can yeah, you? yeah, yeah. Uh, this one should be empty, I think. Okay, so these, uh, we got pogo pins in there, I see. Yes, because there's electronics in here. Um, there is only one part that is not readily available off the shelf, which is the PCB backer for that pogo pin. Okay. It's just a pass-through board. So what are we looking at? So this is your spool holder. You would have like a pin here with Yeah, so you would print a different hub depending on the size of the spool. Uh, most one kilogram spools will fit in this enclosure just fine. Okay, and then what do we have for the feeding mechanism here? So it's a direct drive extruder, um, like the thumper block, the servo closes the guide layer, which is magnetically repulsed. Okay, so this is basically kind of acting like a, uh, almost like the bamboo AMS system. So this is feeding filament, to the tool head and then the tool head grabs it and takes over kind of thing? Yes, exactly. Okay, but this is, it's the eight track. You have this set up for eight right now. Yeah, but it's modular. If you only wanted two or if you wanted 24, you could do that. Um, another thing is it is completely self calibrating. There's an array of filament sensors. There's no encoders. So it just does blind checks on where the filament is all the way up to the tool head. Uh, any clipper printer can use it. The only thing is you need a filament sensor in the tool head or near it. The only value that we have plugged into the firmware for it is the distance between that filament sensor and the nozzle. Okay, awesome. And does it have a re-spooling feature when it's unloading the filament? Uh, so right now we're just kind of banking on constraining the spool kind of tightly. We can go about 12 feet before we get a tangle. Which okay. We're not going nearly that far. Okay, so by constraining the filament here when it unwinds, it just kind of spools back up automatically yeah. on its own? Okay. That means you, you would have to print different holders for different size spools to be the most optimal, to where, like so you don't get tangles as frequently? Um, most spools are about 200 or 201 millimeters. Both of those work. Um, it's a parametric system and it's modular, so if you wanted to do bigger spools with bigger slots, you could do that. Okay. Uh, something I find very important about this system is there's no filament cutter. Okay. And we're also not doing any filament ramming, so we're not making a ball so that everything stays free. What actually happens is we take it out of the heat break slowly. And what that does is make that ugly little string that I'm sure you're aware of. Yes. And in the back of the printer, this, we call this the octafunnel. That's where it takes the eight to one. Okay. There's a print in place door that when the filament comes back into that, if you're feeding that color again, it folds it over in our purge tower. It will take care of burning that out of the hot end. So by the time you're actually printing again, you have gone back to constant diameter filament. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. awesome. So that takes care of your variance there. And this is an open source project, I'm assuming? We'll publish it to Discord when the software is fully flushed out awesome. and it's ready for anyone to start using. Okay, cool. So that is the 8-track from Armored Turtle. So we're here, I have Rob here from Vision Miner, and not only do they make some really good bed adhesion stuff, they actually do make 3D printers too, and Rob here is gonna tell you more about what they got. Today we brought our 22 Addix V2. Now what's special about this machine? Well, since 2017, all we do is we focus on high temperature materials like Peak and Ultim and PPSU and engineering aerospace grade materials like all these companies in the background you see here. Those are our primary customers. So this machine in particular, we actually made after years and years using other printers and you see the bed doing this crazy dance. 
Primarily, that's actually so that we can keep all the thermals inside and not have to open the door to reach in and burn your arm on the hot bed that's all yeah, up to 200 Celsius, right? The chamber itself is advertised up to 90. We print higher than that. And the nozzles are slice engineering copper heads that go up to 500 C. As you can see here, it's an IDEX machine. Now, this enables you obviously to use soluble supports, different support materials, multi-materials, but mainly for the production environment, it allows you to print two parts at the same time in either duplicate mode or mirror mode. So it's almost like buying two printers in one for the businesses that we serve. Now, the bed, this articulation is also good for something else, and that is five axis printing. So you get multi-axis printing and you can print a 90 degree overhang with this much articulation using no support material. All the software in that is the hardest part and is in development and will be coming out shortly. Uh, but for right now, it's a really good leveling system and future-proof for five axis. Yeah, that's something a lot of companies have been working on is, yeah. is that five axis, the rotating beds. Tons it's of people. It's a software. You can't just throw a bench, you had a slicer, and it'll exactly. fit up each Exactly. It's so. all software. So one day, one day. Yep. But it's nice to have the ability for when that does come, you're ready to rock with. Right. Now, why are we showing this off at Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Festival? We're a business to business, not really the same market. The biggest thing nowadays is if you look at computers in the 70s, it was all for business, but now it's all consumer markets dominated. Same with 3D printing. For 30 years, the patents were owned by Stratasys and nobody could do anything. 10, 15 years ago, those expired and now all the innovation is coming out of the community. So we've got Bontech LGX extruders, which are the best of the best in the market. Slice engineering hot ends for that ultra high temp engineering grade materials to keep the thermals really solid. And of course, it's all running on an open source Duet system, so you can modify this to your heart's content. We've actually got companies like Northrop Grumman and these big aerospace companies who are like, hey, we're gonna do something with your machine, we need to be able to use it. There's no design here mentality, it's not our own proprietary stuff, so it's over expensive, you're gonna buy it from us. We use the best technology that we can find and we give it to our customers. And then if you want, you can change it out too. What boards are, are you running, Duet 2s or 3s? Uh, Duet 2s at the moment, Duet 3s coming in the next batch. Awesome. And what is the uh, what is the print volume and capability? So we're running a 350 by 350 millimeter bed up to 450 millimeters tall. So it's about 14 by 14 by 17 inches. Okay. And is it all NEMA 17 steppers? And uh, so it's actually LDO motors and they're 180 Celsius uh, resistant motors. So oh, nice. most of the motors are out of the chamber. The only two motors in the chamber are the extruder motors. So it's overbuilt. Awesome. There's eight motors in this machine running everything, three on the Z, four on the X and the Y, and two on the extruders. Awesome. One other thing too uh, is up here, you'll notice we don't use a bunch of proprietary connectors. We've got these Phoenix Connections uh, terminal blocks so that you can literally, if you want to slap a laser on it, you can. If you want to modify it to your heart's content, you don't have to worry about finding the right connectors. Awesome. Yeah. And of course, you got a big fat red e-stop down here, which is always good to see. That is the Vision Miner 22 IDEX V2 from Vision Miner. Not just bed adhesion. Not just bed adhesion. We also do 3D scanning and uh, reverse engineering. So, you know, the professional grade 3D scanners. There's hobbyist grade and whatnot that are great for certain projects, but really when it comes to professionals, you get into the infrared, the full color, the blue laser, and we have a ton of videos on our YouTube channel about awesome. those, education, etc. Super fun. And you can find out more at visionminer.com. Visionminer.com. Awesome. Thank you. Sweet. You got it. Hello, so we're here with Brian from Lulzbot, and they have their new printer, the Mini 3, here on display. And Brian here is going to tell you more about it. Yeah, yeah. so as you said, um, latest and greatest Mini 3 just launched on the website this past week. Um, super excited to step into the world of Clipper. Uh, it was a big hurdle to kind of get over the scariness of consumer level Clipper stuff. So worked a lot with different developers. Um, we're running main sale, as you can see right here. We skinned a lot of it and kind of made it um, in a little bit simpler terms to match up with our Kira. That way all the um, wording matches up directly so the users aren't scared that way. Um, we added in like this here tool head feature. That's not something that normal mainsail has, but we have a very easy swappable tool head system. So three bolts and one wire harness and you can swap between 175 plastics to it or yeah, 285. Um, you can swap between nozzles and still, everything You're still like rocking that. the three mil filament, eh? Yeah, yeah, we've got a ton of um, consumers that are in the industry that they won't buy anything unless it's 285. 
So we're not gonna block off that part of our sales just yep. because everyone else wants to do 175. We're gonna open up the option. And as you can see, Galaxy Series here, it's wonderful lineup with Bontech and Slice Engineering, two great manufacturers and we love working with them. So a little bit back to the Mini 3. Um, it now comes with an enclosure, so it's all vacuum formed, nice and easy lift off, drops on, um, super easy. A couple of plastic parts that go and cap off some of the sheet metal, um, running CAN bus on the board. Um, and then as you saw before, we're running mainsail interface on it. So it's um, both over line you can upload prints or else we still have um, USB capabilities that you just drop in the USB and print off those files. Um, awesome. Linear rails going to Core XZ, kind of upping the motion system, higher accelerations with those linear rails. Um, we're just trying to improve our machines as fast as we can go, um, or as fast as the polymers will let us go. So for these machines, you're, you're capable of pretty much most modern plastic, except for like the crazy high engineering yeah, stuff? Yeah, so our bed goes up to 105 degrees um, C, and then the hot ends is 295. So pretty much every um, consumer level, um, plastic plus with the enclosure um, you can pretty much go and print in a heating chamber and stuff like that we do have a spot in the back for a fan so if you want um, active carbon filtration system you can plug that in and have a filtered enclosure as well awesome and what are you running for controllers in these machines are you so we've think? got big tree tech um, it's the manta m5p we've got a custom skin of it um, that as well as uh, EBB 36 tool headboard on there. And awesome. then the HDMI 5 by Clip or by Big okay. Tree Tech. And is this running mainline Clipper like latest release yes. too? Yes. Um, so that was another big thing. We didn't want to lock into anything. So we've got all our forks of this version. So we pull in changes, make sure that we can update properly all at once. Um, you're not going to get locked out by not updating one board versus the other but we're still not locking you into our config files. It's still mainline Clipper. We've got our low spot um, dash config. Um, that's very similar to like mainsail config where we can upload files to that. You can't touch our file, but you just load whatever into printer.cfg and you override all our settings. Okay, awesome. So, so you, you basically have like a safety there. Yeah, yeah, it, it kind of comes down to supporting these machines. if. If we don't know what you guys are running, it's so tough to support and try to figure out what's going on. So we can just say, save your printer.cfg, go back to the default, see if it works. Okay, is it on our end or is it on your end? And this is the same work volume as the Mini 2? Yes, um, it's slightly taller in the Z and actually at 280. So it's like six or seven millimeters larger than the Mini 2, um, but very similar. And people can find out more at lulzbot.com? Yeah, lulzbot.com. We got Facebook, we've got Instagram. Um, yeah, pretty much any general social media, we're on there. Awesome. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. Once again, good afternoon.